Hello friends, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink. This is the first official Christmas card video of 2020. I've actually posted several Christmas and holiday cards in September for the Stamp Timber exclusives. But this one is the official first one of the series. As with everything I do, it's going to be all over the place. There's no set schedule, but I will always update and add the links and all that fun stuff. So today's video, not only is it kicking off my 2020 Christmas card series, but it also is part of World Card Making Day. So happy World, World Card Making Day. And it's part of a little sort of mini hop I am doing with Simon Says Stamp. We have several different card makers around the world that design for Simon like I do. And we're all using the same stamp set and just putting our own spin on it. So I will have links to all that in my blog post, which will be linked directly below the video. So the set we're using is the CZ Design Chunky Christmas stamp set. And I started off by gold heat embossing the large joy sentiment onto some Ranger Distress watercolor paper. And now I'm using some, uh, my little Simon Gridline acetate sheet there. And I use that just to straighten and line up the little, some of the little companion sentiments from the set. I wanted to make sure I stamp these straight because it just makes my life easier when I'm going to trim them down with my paper trimmer. And I am going to gold heat emboss these as well, this time on black cardstock. So I'd use my anti-static powder tool, uh, stamped the sentiments with clear embossing ink, and then heat embossing them with Simon's gold embossing powder. And then off camera, I just quickly trim them down with my paper trimmer, and then I'll add them to my cards closer to the end. So for the main uh, sentiment here, I have just my little waffle flower uh, mini water medium mat, and I'm just squeezing out some of the liquid from my uh, aqua shimmer clear glare gloss pen. Technically, I can use that, the pen itself. I could have just picked up the red ink with that pen and painted it because it does have that brush tip. However, I didn't want to risk the glitter gloss pen like soaking up any of that red because as I've mentioned, I think a million times on this channel. Red pigments are, they're beautiful, but they can be the absolute worst to deal with sometimes. <laughs> it basically, it just gets where you don't want it, always. It just, red likes to travel, red likes to get in places it's not supposed to. So I always like to play it safe. So I squeezed out that shimmer and that's what I'm using is my liquid for the watercolor. And I'm just mixing that shimmer liquid with some candied apple distress ink that I smushed there on my little palette. And I just go back and forth and mix it with a paintbrush and paint it on. That's it. And on camera right now, it looks pretty boring. Later, when the cards are done, I will turn the flashlight on on my phone and you will see just how insanely sparkly these are. So I just went in, filled both of these completely with that color, and then I'm going to let them both dry, which did not take very long at all. And one of them I am going to die cut with a combination of Simon's basic rectangle wafer dies as well as an A2 thin frame wafer die. And then the other one I'm just going to fussy cut. So pretty simple with um, something like this. It's fairly like straight, simple lines. So first off, I'm taping both of these wafer dies into place at the same time. It just makes it simpler. I can die cut it in one pass. So I'm going to have kind of the outer frame and the inner piece. And then um, I will come back to that in a minute. I'm basically doing kind of the same thing. I'm just doing a simpler kind of clean and simple version of this card and then a very much stepped up version of this card. So for the stepped up version, I have the sketchy lines uh, background stamp. I have it face up on my desk and I'm inking it up with some schoolhouse red ink and then putting a piece of red cardstock over it and then some scrap paper over it again because like I said red ink in any form whether it's a marker ink pad watercolor anything anything with red pigment in it, it just it really does like to get everywhere so better to be safe than sorry so I put scrap paper over it then rub my hands on it once I got that stamped onto my background, I'm going to do the same thing I did with the, the Joy Sentiment. I have a basic rectangle wafer die and then an A2 thin frames wafer die. And I'm just going to tape both of these into place with some washi tape, just kind of eyeballing it and lining them up. And then the washi tape is just going to hold them in place so I can run these through my die cut machine and die cut both the pieces that I want at the same time. 
And then I also die cut my absolute, st will always be my favorite, Tonics Gold Satin Pearl cardstock. This has that gorgeous gold finish, but because it has a satin finish, it's not reflective, like, you know, like a gold foil cardstock. So it just goes with everything and I love it. So I die cut the same frames from that gold pearl cardstock. And then I also pulled out the Simon Says Stamp Leafy Christmas Tree Wafer Dies. I'd used these last year. I think they came out last year. They're still available. I'll have links to them. And this is going to be on my stepped up card. And I die cut three shades of green cardstocks with those wafer dies. And then this is something I've shown in a couple other videos when I use these thin frames. I finally figured out the easiest way to do this is to flip everything upside down and then just use washi tape to adhere the frame back into place, whether you use the same one you die cut just for the, you know, the definition or you insert a different one like I'm doing here. Flipping it over and using washi tape is so much faster and easier than like gluing it all down like I do and then fitting everything into place. That doesn't take very long, but this is even faster and just easier. So I taped my frames together and then to adhere my leafy Christmas trees, I started with my darkest layer on the bottom. I just add little tiny bits of glue here and there. I, I pretty much put glue on every little part just because I wanted these adhered down because even with all of the layers and the dimension, this still ends up being a pretty flat card. So I layered everything darkest to lightest and I just kept putting acrylic blocks on top of the tree there as everything dried so that everything is just pressed down. And then I've got my little tree made. And then I also die cut a little star with the um, mini stars wafer dies and just some yellow cardstock. So I die cut that, I popped it into place with a little thin 3D foam square. And then I painted that star with that same aqua shimmer pen. So it's all, it's gonna be all super sparkly too. And then the joy die or word that I had fussy cut out, I adhered it in a place. And then I adhered the sentiments on above and below it with more craft tacky glue and just press that into place. So this basically finishes off the front of the, the more involved card. So to do the clean and simple card, I have just the white cardstock or watercolor piece that I had die cut with the thin frame and the basic rectangle wafer dies. And now I'm gonna inlay that uh, gold satin pearl frame that I had die cut with the same rectangle A2 thin frame wafer die. And then face down, putting all that washi tape on to adhere that frame into place and keep all three of these pieces together, which just makes my life easier. So once that's adhered, I have a piece of red cardstock that I didn't stamp with a background stamp. I just kept it clean and simple. And then the companion little sentiments here, I'm going to adhere just with more craft tacky glue, kind of lining them up with that little frame. So I got those adhered into place. And then the like main little panel here, I'm going to adhere with um, the Simon's Big Mama foam tape. So it gives it just that little bit of dimension, but it's not as thick as regular foam tape. So it's not going to make it very bulky. So it just gives it that little, that little extra something. So I'm going to adhere that to the red cardstock rectangle. And then both of my card bases are just white cardstock. They're both A2 size cards. And I'm going to stamp the large Merry sentiment from the Chunky Christmas uh, stamp set. And I'm going to stamp that with that same Schoolhouse Red ink from Simon. Just being very aware <laughs> of where the ink is, where my hands are, where the stamp is. Because usually it's like, it's always me. It's always my elbow or the side of my hand that picks up the red ink. And that's what smears it everywhere. So stamp that onto the inside of both cards. And then I can adhere those little sentiments that I had gold heat embossed in the beginning. So I'm going to get those adhered into place so that both cards on the outside will say peace and joy to the world. And the inside says have yourself a Merry Christmas. So I kept the insides of both cards the same just because for simplicity's sake. So got that adhered. And then uh, the card with the Christmas tree is going to get adhered to the card base. And this will completely cover that card base. And then the other one I'm going to adhere and it'll be framed by the white cardstock card base. And as always, you could leave it here, but I do need to add just, just a little bit more bling. <laughs> I have my Studio Kadia Gold Sparkle Crystals. They're just meant to be. So I'm going to put only a few on the more clean and simple card. Just, just a few, just to give it that little bit of bling. 
And then the tree one, of course, I'm going to sprinkle on a few extras because almost like, you know, tree decorations. So I'm going to adhere those into place with dabs of craft tacky glue, just picking them up with my uh, Studio Caudia embellishment wand. And then once these are adhered, these cards are complete. So now I can turn the flashlight on my phone so you guys can see just how sparkly this is. It's so fabulous. So like I mentioned earlier in the video, I will have a link to the World Card Making Day celebration on the Simon Says Stamp blog. That will be linked in my blog, which is linked directly below the video along with the supplies and everything else. It's worth checking out the post because there is a big giveaway on the Simon blog as well to celebrate. Um, and yeah, I will have a supply list. I'll link to all the supplies I used. So you can check that out below if you are interested. Thank you all so much for watching and subscribing and thumbs upping and commenting and happy World Card Making Day. And I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.